Welcome back to another Professional Picks NFL video. We got week eight here with week seven still wrapping up tonight. And our lock of the week, um, riding on a Patriots win. We also do not have Woj on with us today. So we expect this video to be a little bit quicker, um, but we'll jump right into it. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment. Love all the interaction we've been having with you guys this season. Try to be even better about some of our replies. But we'll jump right into our picks for the week. Um, always looking at what's going to be featured on the card first. And our first matchup is the New York Giants heading to Seattle. As you guys know, if you've been watching our videos the last couple of weeks, you know I'm all over Seattle. Um, called them to make the playoffs even after their two and three start. That's looking a lot better with them here, sitting at four and three. And then you have the Giants, who are now six and one. Um, one of the really surprising teams in the NFL right now, winning a lot of close matchups, uh, just avoiding mistakes and just playing really disciplined football. We got the two and a half point spread here, which um, favors the Giants by half a point, given a neutral playing field. Makes sense. Um, supports that six and one record. But as you guys know, I'm all over the Seahawks. Both of these teams have very similar uh, defensive rankings. According to PFF, the Seahawks are just one lower than the Giants. But this Seahawks offense has performed much better. Geno Smith is a legit quarterback. And Kenneth Walker stepping in for Rashad Penny um, has even been an upgrade in the backfield. I think the Seahawks put up more points than the Giants here. I also think the Giants are due for a regression. Um, I think they're due for a loss. The spread obviously um, reflects that, but I do think I do think the Seahawks will have no problem moving the ball against this Giants defense, who's um, one of the bottom in the NFL right now. I'll take the Seahawks minus two and a half here, even with um, DK uh, tentative knee injury. Um, MRIs came back positive, but. Waiting on some news there, despite whether he plays or not. I like the Seahawks to pick up the win here and cover at home. Next matchup, a little bit less exciting here, but we have Carolina heading to Atlanta. Really a battle of offense versus defense. Um, Seahawks, or not Seahawks, the, the Panthers here, much better defense than the Atlanta Falcons. And then Falcons much better offensively rated this year. And the Carolina Panthers find it really hard to believe that the Falcons could keep playing at a top five offensive level. I expect some regression there. And although the Carolina offense has been horrible, um, not starting Baker last week was really an addition by subtraction, uh, limited some of those turnovers. He had the 32nd ranked QBR in the league. So it's really hard to play much worse than he did. Um, they got the run game more involved with Deonta Foreman and Choba Hubbard. I really like the Panthers plus six and a half on the road. The line seems too big to me for two teams that are fairly even in talent. And I really just think that Carolina defense is going to be the difference maker here. They'll keep it close. I think they could even win this game, but I like them a lot to cover at the plus six and a half. And then our last straight bet um, we're going to have for this week is Arizona at Minnesota. Um, three and a half point line here. So slightly favoring the Vikings who are six and one. Pretty similar to that, that Seahawks Giants line we saw. But we do have the Vikings coming um, off of a buy here. That extra time to prepare. Um, and this is just a noon game. Uh you could look into it as much as you want, but Kirk Cousins plays much better in these Sunday noon games. Um, not a primetime matchup. Got to beat a team that you should beat. This is when Kirk Cousins really plays great. On top of that, this, the Cardinals have one of the worst secondaries in all of the NFL. Um, this Vikings offense loves to pass the ball, even especially now um, with the new head coach this season. I really like the Vikings here to cover at home, um, got to win by more than a field goal. So potentially see if you could get something without the hook. But 
I like the Vikings minus four here even. I think they take care of business. This Arizona Cardinals team got pretty lucky. Can't discount them because the plays did happen, but they had two pick sixes. That changes the game right there. On top of that, they also picked off Andy Dalton in the end zone as well. I see Minnesota putting up just as many points, if not more than that Saints offense did against Arizona at home. And this one will be taking the Vikings minus three and a half. And then we have three matchups that are going to be featured in our teaser for the week. First, we're looking at Chicago against Dallas. Big spread. Personally, won't be betting this one straight up. Um, I think Dak's going to play a lot better. He shook off some of the rust, and they, they pulled away. It's a fairly comfortable win at the end of this last week. I could also see the Bears playing pretty bad tonight against the Patriots, and this line moving even more. Um, past 10 to potentially 11. Um, just keep that in mind if you are interested in taking this teaser. And I just don't think there's so many obvious mismatches in this one, but Micah Parsons is going to have a day against that Bears O-line and Justin Fields, who holds the ball longer than anybody in the league. Um, this one's going to be teased, but we do love the Cowboys to come out on top in this one. The other matchup, um, and the, the closer matchup on the teaser is going to be the San Francisco 49ers at the Los Angeles Rams. Historically, Shanahan dominates this matchup. And I think it's really just attributed to this Niners team. Um, very well balanced, solid defense. Um, but they do also have stars, obviously, guys like Kittle, Samuel, um, you have McCaffrey now, even. But the Los Angeles Rams are off of a bye week here. Um, love a team that's off of a bye, especially when you have a head coach like Sean McVay. You could it's probably going to take that pretty um, to heart, just his awful record against Kyle Shanahan. Um, going to want to have a bounce back after their first matchup. And on top of that, while well, the Niners have been falling away from it a little bit, their, their go-to is the run. Um, whether it's on offense, defense, but the 49ers love to just ground and pound, um, short drop-offs with Garoppolo. This Rams defense has the best rush defense in the NFL. Um, they're going to force Garoppolo into those longer um, yardage plays where he struggles to make those throws. Obviously, McCaffrey can mitigate that. They have tons of options. But when you tease the Rams here, who are home underdogs, I like it a lot for McVay to keep this one close as mentioned, especially off of the bye. In the last matchup rounding out our parlay, we have the Green Bay Packers headed to Buffalo. And I don't think I've ever seen a line this big um, having Rodgers as an underdog. So um, definitely tough to take in at first. Uh, if I were going to bet this one straight up, I would probably lean towards the Packers but I would probably pay for it because this Bills team, they've been the best defense in the NFL, arguably the best offense. I think they have the best quarterback right now in the league. You can't really bet against this Bills team. The spread obviously reflects that. That's why this one's going to also be featured in the teaser um, at the minus 10 and a half. So next we'll be looking at our card. We have the Seahawks minus two and a half. I love them at home against an overperforming Giants team. These teams match up similarly on defense, but the Seahawks passing attack really separates them here. Second matchup, we got the Panthers plus six and a half heading to Atlanta. I think Atlanta continues to regress back towards the mean. I think the Panthers have um, just a little bit more hope within their season. Um, Matt Rule was Obviously awful. They got rid of Robbie Anderson. They're cleaning house, giving these guys some opportunity. It's a bottle or a battle of the bottom feeders. I think six and a half is too much to give up to this Panthers defense, especially against an overperforming Atlanta offense. And then rounding us out, we got the Vikings coming off the bye, um, six and one. And they're playing the Cardinals team. Yes, they have DeAndre Hopkins back. He looked very good, but I still feel like they really stole one um, against the Saints last Thursday night. I think the Vikings come out here off the bye Sunday noon game. Kirk Cousins 
slings it, and they just put up enough points to cover. Obviously, the the Cardinals are gonna get theirs too, but I think the Vikings have a very favorable offensive matchup. And then our teaser bet. This is our lock of the week, similar to last. We got the Rams keeping it within a field goal and a touchdown against the Niners, also off the bye. Bills to win by at least two against the sputtering Packers and then the Cowboys to just beat the Bears, who look like one of the worst teams in the NFL. And then we're going to take a quick run through of our remaining games now. Um, this was our card, so the rest of these are just just leans and quick previews for the remainder of the video. First up, or first we have our partnership with Prize Picks. As always, we'll match your first deposit up to $100 using our promo code there on the left, Pro Picks. It's a daily fantasy app. Um, it's also usable in betting illegal states. So if you're looking for more ways to get some money on these games, definitely give it a look. Shoot us a message if you're interested in signing up. Um, just yep, feel free to comment, whatever. Um, they have a lot of promos within the app, too, where they'll cut daily deals and almost make it impossible to really lose an entry if you are at least patient with, with the app and their offerings. But as mentioned, we'll look at the rest of the games for week eight. <clears throat> and we have the Baltimore Ravens heading to Tampa. Ravens coming off a three-point win against the Browns. Didn't look great, but just gutted one out. And as mentioned, Tampa Bay losing 21-3 to to the Carolina Panthers, not really being able to get anything going. Tom Brady has his first losing record through seven games since 2002. I do think there, there is time to sound the alarm in Tampa, even if they start slow. Usually seems to turn around a little bit by now. Um, rather than putting up three points to one of the worst teams in the NFL. Tampa also has the worst rush offense in the entire league. They're putting a little bit too much on Tom Brady right now, and maybe he just doesn't have it anymore. I don't want to say that because first time, first thing you do, or when you do say that, Tom Brady will turn it around, pick up a, an easy win here, but – I think it's definitely time to at least be a little worried. Age has to catch up to everybody eventually. On the other hand, this Bucks rush defense, who is top of the league the last couple of seasons, they've regressed to the middle of the pack. It's really a full team here. Um, they've losing pieces. Guys are aging. Um, the team is just not as strong as it was last year, and especially two years ago. So I do think with all the injuries and in age on Tampa, but this team just isn't going to be the same. Um, they also might not really need to have that great of a record to end up winning the NFC South. They could even pick it up the following week and still be right in the running. I do think Lamar is going to take advantage of this favorable run matchup. Um, I know J.K. Dobbins went out, but this team's not going to change their identity. At the end of the day, give me, give me Lamar over Tom this late in his career. Probably sounds really stupid. Hope that doesn't come back to bite me. But the pick here is the Ravens minus one and a half. Next up, we have the London game. Uh, just a really not too interesting matchup. Uh, Russ might not even make it out. He's He still has his uh, injury um, that's up in the air. I could see him sitting out the London trip before the bye week. Um, the backup. Rippy in, um, only put up nine points against the Jets. This Broncos team is just so hard to watch. Reminds me of the Bears a couple years ago. Statistically, they have the best defense in the NFL. Statistically, they have the worst offense. And they're sitting at two and five. It's real tough to read this team. I think there's a lot more going for the Jaguars. The spread definitely reflects that in a neutral site game. I think Trevor Lawrence can do enough to put up. 17, 20 points, even sounds like quite a bit against this Broncos defense, but I don't think they're going to have too much trouble um, stopping the Broncos attack, who just has not been able to get going all year. Um, the lean here is the Jaguars, minus three and a half. And then next up, we have the Texans versus the Titans. 
And I'm just going to really focus on one key stat here is the Houston has the second worst rush defense in the NFL. And on the same note, uh, the Titans have one of the best rushing attacks, obviously, with Derrick Henry. And when you flip the, the script, uh, the Texans love to run the ball, whereas the Titans' rush defense is top five in the NFL. I think this, this matchup heavily favors the Titans. I really like the minus three and a half. Um, didn't make the card, but they were definitely close. And with all the, the mentioned running that's going to be going on in this game, the under might not be too bad of a play here as well. Then we got Miami heading to Detroit. Uh, we got a three and a half point spread here. I know Woj would disagree with me on this one. And I've tried to stay away from them for a little while now, but I do like the Lions plus three and a half at home. Seems really low, but this Dolphins team barely came away from a win against the Steelers. And they really gave the Steelers multiple com or opportunities to come back. They just couldn't quite pull it out. I just think the Lions are due to, to steal one. Um, I'm on a row. I got a concussion, but you should see DeAndre Swift coming back this week. I think Jared Goff could really get it going against this Miami secondary, who before last night did not look too great all season. More of a gut play, but I do think I do think the Lions could keep this one close enough. Um, definitely expecting a high scoring matchup. Could see it head into the 50s, but um, I just I don't see. Tua really blowing out the lines here. Um, even when they started 3-0, they only had a halftime lead the, the very first game of the season. Miami's a good team, but they're not great. Um, I could see them having a bit of a letdown here on the road after winning in primetime. And then next up, we have the Raiders versus the Saints. I'm too biased on this one. I went with uh, I bet on the Saints against the Raiders last week. That's how I'm leaning again here. Going to New Orleans, I think these teams are actually very similar in matchup. Both have good passing attacks thus far. The defenses are underplaying. But I still think the Saints have a much better defense on paper. I think Lattimore can at least somewhat mitigate Devontae Adams in the secondary. And I just think the Saints are due for a win. I, there's definitely some bias because we had the Saints last week. But with all those poorly timed turnovers, um, I just think this team is better than their 2-5 and five record indicates. You have them here as a home dog, too. I think there's some good value in that, especially with just how poor the Raiders' defense has been. Like, don't get me wrong, Raiders' offense, very solid. Um, pass the ball, run the ball. But Darren Waller still might not play this week we'll see but I do think I do think the Saints are just a more well-balanced offensive team if they could just limit the turnovers I think they'll pick up this one at home next we got the the Pats heading to the New York Jets and it's actually going to be a very good matchup for these two teams for the first time in a while um the Pats just stole one on the road Whereas the Jets picked up a win, but they also have Brees Hall um, tearing his ACL. And he was probably the brightest spot of this team as a whole. Uh, both teams playing very solid defensively. Um, but looking at the quarterbacks here, as much as I want to believe in Zach Wilson, Joe Flacco played better than he did through his couple games. And then looking at the Patriots, um, Bailey Zapp, outperforming what Mac Jones looks like um, in his limited action to start the season. Um, definitely reading more on the recency here, but I, I do think Belichick's showed up that defense. I think they're going to dominate the Bears tonight, and we could even see this spread grow. The Jets are going to – there's still always going to be that, that team that's playing very well, but see here is a home dog even at 5-2. and two. There's a lot of reason – for that and I do think Bill Belichick will head into New York, um, continue this Patriots hot streak, and just remind them, um, like 
who who's still in that division between the Bills, the Pats. I can't I have a very hard time seeing the Jets finishing top two, even even at five and two. I think the Brees Hall injury is going to be bigger than everybody thought. Um, just easily rushing over 100 yards pretty much every time he suited up. Next, we've got Washington at Indianapolis. And this just feels like like a here we go again. I'm I'm liking the commanders. Anybody who watched last season, they know we we rode and we died with the commanders, but they're starting to get me to believe again. I do like Taylor Heineke as a quarterback. And I also do think Washington has solid receiving weapons now. Um, I mean, that's it's no um, secret between McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, Jahan Dodson. Uh, you got Brian Robinson back in the backfield. You have that little two-headed monster, which is a little bit of a stretch, but definitely two solid running backs. Uh, Antonio Gibson more heavily on the receiving end. But I do, I do like the commanders here. I think they have offer a little bit more to be excited about, um, especially with this Colts team who was just expected to run over everyone all season. It just has not come to fruition. The Matt Ryan signing has definitely not played out. He's picked up his play a little bit um, until just the awful performance against the Titans. And if Chase Young, who might come back this week, if he does, I expect him to just give Matt Ryan absolute fits who could barely move back there in the pocket anymore. I'm liking the Commanders plus four in this one on the road. Next up, we got the, the Bengals heading to the Cleveland Browns. Um, this is our second to last matchup we'll be looking at. Another team I've been riding heavily this year is the Bengals. Um, definitely seen some more luck here late. But they do not match up well with this Cleveland Browns team. Um, Cincinnati thrives in their pass coverage on defense, but they really lack against um, defending the run. I think Chubb, Kareem Hunt will get pretty much whatever they want. I do think this one's going to be one of those lower scoring games. Also going to be close um, as these most of these divisional matchups are. That was the narrative I rode last week when I had the Browns um, plus six and a half against the Ravens. That paid off. I do think the Browns are going to keep this one very close. I do think they're going to be able to run a lot. Their secondary hasn't been where it is. So Bengals should be able to pass all over the Browns. Browns should be able to run all over the Bengals. But I expect a lot of clock to just be burned off here. I think it's going to be Closer than people expect, especially the Browns not playing that well. Um, don't know if they're going to get Deshaun back later. It's kind of the point where they need to figure out if they're going to salvage this season or not. I could see the Browns coming out here, winning this one at home. But give me, give me them plus three, um, just knowing that Chubb's going to be able to run all game. Kareem Hunt's going to be able to run all game. They'll be able to put some points on the board. If this one becomes a high score matchup, I don't like our chances but I'm expecting it to be a close one with the Browns being able to cover the plus three. And then last up, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers heading to Philly. Um, this one could have also been one dimension for the teaser, but even with how bad this Pittsburgh team is, that defense is still solid. Um, Kenny Pickett didn't look great, but he's starting to look a little bit better. And then you obviously have the Eagles, who right now are the best team in football. This one didn't make um, the card or even a teaser bet at that, just because that Pittsburgh defense is really solid, even for how bad this team has been playing. If I had to pick, I would probably still take the Steelers plus 10 and a half here. Took them with the points last night, plus seven. Did not play great, but that defense kept it in them, and they covered. I'm thinking the same thing here. In this one. And then we have our card. Um, just once again, we got the Seahawks minus two and a half at home. We got the Panthers heading to Atlanta. I think they cover, I think they even potentially win that game. And then we have the Vikings at home against Arizona. I still think Cliff 
Cliff Kingsbury's on the hot seat. I'm not completely ready to change my mind after their last week win against New Orleans. So we'll get the verdict after um, this week eight games play out. And then if you're taking anything, take the teaser, preferably take it tonight, just in case um, any of these lines change here. But we got the Bills minus one, Rams plus 11 at home against the Niners and then the Cowboys to just pick up the win. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, thank you for watching and good luck in week eight.